Okay, uh, let's solve this differential equation. We have a function f of x, and we're going to take its second derivative, minus 4 times that function, has to be equal to the sine of 2x. And we also have these initial conditions. Whatever this function is, when you evaluate it at 0, it has to be equal to 1. And when you take its first derivative and evaluate that at 0, it has to be equal to minus 2. So, given this information, we want to solve this equation for uh, f of x. And we proceed like we've done in the other videos. We try to find the Laplace transform of both sides of the equation. And for this expression here, we use this relationship. So we're going to have s squared times f of s minus s times f of 0, but f of 0 is 1, so we have minus s, minus f prime of 0, which is minus 2, so that's plus 2, minus 4 times f of s, and that has to equal to the plus transform of the sine of 2x, and that's 2 divided by s squared plus 4. So over here we have f of s times s squared minus 4. And let's bring these terms over to this side. So this will equal 2 over s squared plus 4 plus s minus 2. Now we divide both sides of the equation by this. And we determine what f of s is, that's equal to 2 divided by s squared plus 4 times s squared minus 4 plus s minus 2 divided by s squared minus 4. So right now we have not yet determined f of x obviously. We haven't solved for this, but we do know what this Laplace transform is. It's that expression there. And let's see if we can simplify this now so we can take the inverse Laplace transform. This is the difference of two squares. So this is s plus 2 times s minus 2. So we know what that part is. That was easy enough. 1 over s plus 2. What about this? Um, this like the only way we can satisfy or to uh, simplify this is to use our technique of partial fractions. So we have 2 divided by s squared plus 4. We can't simplify that any further. This is the difference of 2 squares. So let's see, this, s squared plus 4, that's a quadratic factor, and then we have s plus 2, s minus 2, both of those are linear factors, so this is going to be equal to, for the quadratic term, it's a s plus b divided by s squared plus 4, plus, and let's see, we have the two uh, linear terms. We have plus c over s minus 2 plus d over s plus 2. Now, remember, this is how we handle quadratic terms here. And again, if you're a little bit rusty on your partial fractions technique, if you go to um, digital university, I look under the free calculus videos and then go to the integration techniques section. We have a video where we introduce the technique of partial fractions and the different ground rules that apply for using it. And then also we have other videos where we use uh, the technique of partial fractions to solve integrals. So if you need to brush up on your 
partial fractions method, you might find those useful for you. What we had to do here is multiply both sides of the equation by this, and then multiply it through again and collect like terms. And when you do that, because what we have to do is we have to solve for these four unknowns right now. So multiply both sides of the equation by this, and then collect like terms, and what you find they end up with is something like this. 2 equals A plus C plus D times S cubed, and let's see, plus B plus 2C minus 2 times D times S squared, and for the S term there is minus 4A, and then plus 4C plus 4 times D times S, and then for the constants there's minus 4B, and there's plus 8C minus 8 times d. Multiply both sides of the equation by this, and then multiply it through further, correct like terms, and you end up with this. So, there's no s cubed on this side, so these have to add up to zero. These have to add up to zero. There's no s term. These have to add up to zero. And there's one constant, so those have to add up to 2. So you have four unknowns that we have to solve for. A, B, C, D, and we have four different equations. Here, 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 and here. And look at this one. We have A plus C plus D has to be 0. This has to be 0. Just divide by 4. A plus C plus D equals 0. Minus A plus C plus D has to be 0. So here we have C plus D, C plus D. Here we have minus A added to it. Here we have plus A added to it. It has to be the same thing. So A has to be 0. And then we'll have that C plus D equals 0, C plus D equals 0, C is to equal minus D. So go ahead, do the algebra, and it comes out that A is 0, B equals minus 2 eighths, C equals 1 16th, D equals minus 1 over 16. Okay, so if we do that, Now remember, f of s equals this plus this term here. So we're just going to do this, plus 1 over s plus 2 equals f of s. And a is 0, b is minus 2 eighths, so now we get f of s equals minus 2 over 8 times 1 over s squared plus 4. c is 1 16, so we have plus 1 over 16 times, times 1 over s minus 2. D is minus 1 16, so you have minus 1 over 16, 1 over S plus 2, plus 1 over S plus 2. So that's F of S. After we use the method of uh, partial fractions to break this up into its components, plus we had that term originally. So here it is. Now we should be ready 
to go ahead and take the inverse of Bott's parent term. Oh, one thing we can simplify, minus 1 over 16 times s plus 1 over 2 plus 1 and s over 2. These will add together, and that will be plus 15 over 16. Okay, and to take the, plus, the inverse to plus transform, remember f of x, that's going to be the inverse of the plus transform of f of s. To make it easier for us, let's write it like this. So that should be equal to minus 1 over 8. This would be the sine of 2x. Plus 1 over 16e to the plus 2x plus 15 over 16e to the minus 2x. And there's our f of x. So the tedious part of the problem is usually simplifying the Laplace transform. Once you find an equation for it, a lot of times that means you have to use the method of partial fractions, and sometimes that can uh, entail a lot of algebra, so you're going to look out for that. But once you get that simplified, then usually you can just look at it and just read your answer off of it directly, if, you, if you've been keeping up on how to take your inverse Laplace transforms. So anyway, for this equation right here, f of x comes out to equal this expression right here. Okay, uh, come back, join us for some more videos. We're going to learn some more properties of the Laplace transforms, and then we'll use those properties to expand our table of uh, Laplace transform functions. So come back and join us for those videos.